Hey, Jungle Explorer here, and again, back on remodeling this old mobile home that I bought. Um, this is the breaker box, was in it, and when it got here, um, this part of the breaker box was completely broken off. I had to screw it on. It's got oversized breakers. There's 30 amp breakers with 14 gauge wire. Um, there's no main disconnect in here. Um, there's no cover for it. And so it's got like extra big holes. It looks like somebody just took this off a construction site they found in the garbage and put it in here and threw whatever size breaker they wanted. Uh, they didn't even use uh, proper size breakers for things. It's, it's got this weird breaker here. It's got a 20 amp, 20 amp, and then a 30 and a double pull between it. Uh, they just using whatever they, uh, they, they wanted to. Now, the main thing you need to do whenever you're going to do any electrical on a house is the first thing is turn the power off, which we've already done. Um, and so uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to remove this all out, take everything out and put a brand new breaker box in here. Um, you know, updated breaker box with a main disconnect and rewire all this. And I'll just walk you through that process. So if you're facing this yourself, uh, you will have some instructions on how to go about it. So number one, turn the power off. Now, as simply a safety precaution, even though I know that the power is off, um, I'm going to go ahead and test this just for your sake. Got my uh, multimeter tester here. Going to set it to the uh, AC volts measurement here. And you can go to either the, the ground bus or the neutral bus. We're going to go to the neutral bus. Touch to the main power right here. This is where your power comes in. Here's your wires. You can go to these lugs down here and you know I've got zero. I've got no power whatsoever on this at all. So I know that it's dead. Now we can begin disassembling it. Okay, It's really important. Um, I like when you're disassembling something and putting it together is to take pictures along the way. So I'm just going to take my camera out here, my smartphone, and I'm going to take a picture of what it looks like before I do anything to it. I'm going to take close-up pictures to these connections right here. That way I have a pattern of how these wires are in here, what they look like, where they go, because when I take it all apart, um, you know, it's going to be hard to tell. <music> removed out of here and now it's time to put the new box in okay so we got our new box here and obviously it's taller than the old hole so what we're going to have to do is uh, cut this hole out to make it a little bit larger kind of frame it in so we'll go ahead and push the box up against this side here and we'll mark around the edges here so we know where to cut out Okay, so got our hole cut out to the right size for our box, about ready to put our box in. But we can't go ahead and put the box in first because there's no way to get to the wires. So we're going to have to feed all the wires and stuff into the box first before we put it in the wall. And um, 
So what we need to do is count how many knockouts we need to take out on top and bottom and sizes, get all that set up, and then go ahead and start feeding the wires in before we can put the box in. Okay, so right now this is the most criti critical stage of installing this. We need to figure out how to put the box in. Now the wires are already pre-cut for the existing box, and we need to make sure that the wires are going to reach the, the, the neutral bus, the ground bus, and everything so that we have enough length there. Now this is a lot taller box and most of the wires come in from the top. So, and on the old picture that I took, it shows that on the previous box, the neutral bus was down here on the bottom and the ground bus was over here about midway. Um, so because this box is higher, that would have been around here. So I can actually turn this box over here because we want the main thing is, is are these wires long enough to reach and remember they came in from the bottom so they're gonna to have to come up here and come around and I don't have on the main leads I don't have enough wire to come all the way around top to do that or through this and over here to the side so I'm gonna run it like this because I know that the wires are long enough to come down here and tie into these because that's why I took that first picture uh, before I did anything so I'd know how to hook this thing up. Now, in the worst case scenario that I needed to turn it upside down, this breaker is movable. It does have this little keeper tab here that holds it on, but it can be moved to the other side of the box. This is not the case on all breaker panels. Some of them are a permanent installation. In this case, it's just a big 100 amp double pull breaker, so it is movable. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the box in like this. But first we have to run all the wires into the box before we can put it in the wall because once it's installed, there's no way to get in there. So now what we need to do is we need to, we need to count how many knockouts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight half inch knockouts on the top. And I've already taken this off the old breaker box. This is a uh, one and a quarter inch knockout for the bottom where these go through. We'll knock out eight half inch knockouts on the top, a one and a quarter on the bottom. And so let's go ahead and knock the ones out here in the back. Two, three, four, five. We'll just pry that up. Six, seven, and We'll go ahead and take this one out here. Eight. Come in here where there are alignment pliers and break these knockouts out. Now we'll turn it over. Okay, so now we're gonna knock the inch and a quarter out here. Just get it up where I can get a hold of it with my pliers here. Try to get this out without breaking the other side out. That's your real danger here. There we go, finally. And now we got the right one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install this. We get our big locking ring here. Let me hold this up here where you can see it. The locking ring on here. We want the screws to end up facing forward when we're done. So use your screwdriver down here. Tighten this up. Get that really tight so that it's not loose. Okay, so we have the knockouts out. So let's go ahead and let's start running our wires in here. This one has the shortest ground on it, so I'm going to run it in this far left. I'm going to run. When you're, when you're putting these things in, you really need to pay attention to the length of the wires so that you can make sure that they are going to reach the, 
correct spots. Okay, we've got it all the way in, and it was a booger bear to get in. You can see some wounds on my hands here. Uh, these old boxes are sharp, and it's hard to work with gloves when you're working with small things because they get in the way, so you always end up getting nicked here and there. Uh, sometimes just part of the deal. But I've got it in, I've got all the wires in, and there was no way to film that because it's just me holding the box and trying to run things. It's it's all done in midair and I have to have both hands. Um, it was a booger bear to get in there because I had to push these wires up through, push the box down in the wall, put those wires through, push it up, put it all in, and it's all tight spaces. But, you know, you know, a few uh, colorful words and a couple of nicks and we've got it in. Um, a little bit of patience here. So now we're going to start wiring it. First thing is to put our, our, our uh, main lines on. Um, now they're already stripped here, but you know, you need to strip about an inch off if you, if they're not stripped. The, the, uh, neutral wire has the green, uh, line on it. So we know that that goes over here to the neutral bus. And this is our two hot wires, which will go here. And you know, you really want to try to shape your wires the right way. Um, we're going to try to make this look good. A, a, a breaker box that looks good is a safer breaker box because it's organized and you can tell what's going on. Don't run things haphazard. And I'm going to take you through step by step how to do this. Um, I'm not going to show you every single wire. I'll just show you one here, one there. And if I run into something unique, sometimes because we're dealing with a pre-existing breaker box, the wires have already been cut at a certain length. We'll try to use existing wires, but we may have to pigtail and extend them out a little bit. But we'll get it in and it will look good when we're done. So I've already got, you can see, one wire in. I've bent it around here, bring it in. Then I'm going to bend this one around. And these are hard to bend. You really got to put some strength on it. You don't want to use too many tools on them because you don't want to damage the insulation too much. Um, but uh, I'll shape it just like this one, put it in here. Also, this one over here will be shaped up and cut to length. And, um, as I go along, you'll be able to see how this is doing. Once you get it shaped, get it in there, this right here, you really want to, you don't, as you almost can't tighten this up too much because this is where all your power is going to come through. You want it solid as can be. So we've got our wires in there, got them shaped. Now we'll go ahead, connect our neutral, and uh, then we'll uh, start working on the top wires here. Okay, so we've got our power in and our neutral connected here. Now, um, this is a little bit unique situation here. You may or may not face the same situation, so but I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about it in case you do. Now, this is actually a sub-panel from the meter. Um, because uh, when I put this mobile home in out here on my land, um, <clears throat> I went this the original breaker ba uh, panel in here did not have a main disconnect in it, uh, and I went ahead and put a main disconnect on the pole after the meter, and then ran the wire out here. So there's a there's a, a a master panel in between this box and the meter. So this is technically called a sub panel. Okay, in this case. Um, on the master panel, the, you would put your ground right here, but because this is a sub panel, it requires a separate grounding bus. On this one, we're going to install a separate grounding bus. I just took this grounding bus off the old panel and I'm going to install it in here by bolting it to the actual metal and that will make it, uh, within code for a sub panel because you can't have, uh, you have to have a separate grounding bus on a sub panel. Not so on a master panel, but on a sub panel you do. So instead of running the grounding wire 
to the green screw here, we're going to run it to this, and I'm going to install this right here as a grounding uh, bus right here. Okay, see that we've installed the grounding bus here, connected the grounding wire to it, used two self-tapping screws, so we have a solid grounding bus now. Basically, um, pull all the wires up. We're going to hook up all the grounds first here. We're going to hook up all the neutrals. I'll put some to this side, some to this side. I'd like to keep them separate as much as possible. Um, and then once we get the neutrals and the grounds all installed and put in, then we'll begin hooking up our breakers. All right, we got our neutrals in all over here on this side. I could have went to this side, but I wanted to keep it separate from the ground over here. Now it's time to go with our breakers. So we're going to start off with these right here, which are two 10 gauge wires. Um, 10 gauge wires rated at 30 amps. So, and these will go to a dryer, um, which is the only 30 amp system on this house. So we're going to go ahead and put this breaker in. We'll install this 30 amp above the 100, leave this space open here and go ahead and put that in. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run our, our wires down here. So when you have 10 gauge wire, you can use a 30 amp. When you have, uh, this is 14 gauge, 12 gauge wire, we'll put 20 amps to that. And for the 14 gauge wires, we will use 15 amp breakers. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and wire these all in and then we'll come back and look at it. All right, there we go. All installed. Got my 10 gauge to my 30s here. Got one, two, three, 12 gauge to 20 amps and four 14 gauge wires to 15 amps. Put it all on this side. So if we ever expand down the road, put some new circuits in. We've got some extra space over here. Got to knock the knockouts of the out of the door and we're ready to go. And that is what properly installed breaker box looks like. You want your wires organized around. You know, an organized box is a safe box. You can see what's going on and you know it just whenever you have to do anything down the road it just makes it that much easier to work with. You're not got a big old tangle of wires. All right got the face plate on here. Now just need to go through mark the circuits and uh, label them with this labeling kit here and we'll be and we're done and so that is how you replace a breaker box an old mobile home put a new one in i uh, got a little work to do on this side over here but that looks good now we know it's safe and you know family can sleep well uh, without having to worry about the house burning down electric fires electrical fires is number one cause of house fires so this is the most important thing is getting the electricity updated in your old mobile homes. Get rid of the old outlets. Put in a new breaker box. Get everything. Make sure everything is right because um, your family's life's worth it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and comment. And remember, everything you see in this video is the tools and everything. Uh, if you're interested in those, I will put a link in the description of the video. Just click on the show more. Also, connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Those links will be in the description too. I hope to see you there. Until next time, this is the Jungle Explorer signing out.